Yeah, you on Doc Many are. So got Peter Cole with me, Coley and Paramount Lodge. What role have you got at the moment in the two blues? Uh, first grade manager, mate. There you go. I bet you got some stories to tell too. Beach only was tipping an iceberg just before, so I'm sure there's some stories you probably can't tell on here but might be worth telling later in the day. I can't recall, Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Answered like a true politician. So, no, all right. So, how long have you been involved with the Two Blues for now, Coley? Um, mate, about 2017, 2018, I think. One of those. Um, my young fella, Hayden, was playing there, and they were after first grade manager. And um, Brian Blacklock asked me if I wouldn't mind doing it. And I thought, I'll save me $15 and I'll get a car spot at each away game. So I'm there. <laughs> so, I, so I took it on. And then um, oh, a couple of years ago, Hayden moved up to Newcastle. And, um, mate, I just love it. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't give it up. Yeah. So I stayed on, yeah. So how, how did you come about being involved in rugby in general? Mate, I was a leaguey. I grew up as a leaguey. Um, I, I, played, I played rugby for corrective services when I was working there in the International Law Enforcement Olympics. We actually won a gold medal in that. And then um, that's the only about four or five games of rugby I played. And then, as I said, Hayden got mixed up with uh, the two blues. And that's how I got mixed up with the two blues. So I just sort of <laughs> followed him across. So, yeah, I, I was originally a leaguey, mate. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. So you're, you're from around the Parramatta area in general? No, I um, I live out at... So I was born in Panania, thanks and I live out at Douglas Park, out Camden Way. Yeah. A long way to come, still be first grade manager. More mileage than the Leyland brothers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the club, surely you're hitting them up for K's for that? No, 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 no it's all out of love, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah seriously, it's all out of love, yeah. And I, and I really I, I, um, I really enjoy doing it, mate, I, you know... You know, I'll smell of the liniment as you get into the dressing sheds and that, mate. And the boys are great. And the club, the club's sort of um, done it hard, you know, over the last few years. And I like sort of fighting to the underdogs. So, yeah, I like doing it. So I commentated a few of your games. So one was against North South at Camden in 2020. That, yep. that was a good game. So it's got beaten, but the atmosphere is second to none. I haven't been to a shoot shield game out in a regional area. And... I was surprised by the buy-in by it altogether. Did, did you remember that game at all? Yeah, 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 yeah I do, mate. It was it was good. We um we had a really good connection with the um with the Camden boys. Um, was that the year? I think that was the year we won the nines, the Camden nines. Yeah. And we so we were there for the Camden nines. We won that. Had a really good link with them, and then um, went back and played the the country game out there. Um, unfortunately, we sort of North put a couple of tries on us later in the game, um, which we lost it, but. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and for some reason, obviously COVID hitting, and we sort of we haven't had the same ties with them. So it'd be nice to get back there. For a good bunch of fellas out there, real, real, you know, down in the earth, blood, blood of whatever they call it, you know. So I did see. So I wouldn't call that game. I remember you just had players dropping off left, right, and centre, injury-wise. So that whole season it was a season of like, oh, maybe's and if only. So it was a bit of a tough year because. Uh, didn't do so well on the park, but uh, you could have easily done a lot better if you didn't get decimated so bad. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're right. It was one of those, you know, if the dog didn't stop to have a shit, he would have caught the rabbit years. But um, <laughs> but, but, but unfortunately, mate, yeah, we, we did. We had a couple of key injuries. Um, and, and then when they'd come back, we'd get another couple of key injuries. So we didn't have the... The yeah, real good that, side. Number ten, yeah, I can't remember his name. So now, oh, he's gone back. To what, um, Tom? Rory Garrett. Rory, Rory yeah. Garrett, yeah, yeah. He went to. Um, he decided to give it up and go to subbies, mate. So, yeah, unfortunately, but uh, he was he was a good kicker. Um, but yeah, mate, we just, yeah, just just things just didn't fall into place, and and our stocks were a bit low as well, um, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, yeah. So would it be, uh, so I call Subby's games as well, I call Hawkesbury Rally games and <laughs> yeah, got the Tullys, Liam, yeah. Mark Daniel and, and Riley Jacobson as well, they're all running around Hawkesbury Rally, so yeah. must be tough seeing that, Adrian Musico is running around at St Pat's yeah. uh, along with Patrick Campisi and all that, yeah. <laughs> you must get tears in the eyes sometimes, no, they've got these quality of guys that could come back to the club if uh, they ever wanted to come back, I'm sure they'd be more than welcome. Oh, absolutely. Amos Vega is another one that's out there at, at yeah, Hawksby. Um, good number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Um, some re really good fellas. Not just good players, but good fellas. Yeah, um, yeah mate. Yeah, welcome with open arms, you know. If they want to come back, I, I think a couple of them are just sort of 
decided that they've sort of had enough. They just wanted to have a bit of muck around and a bit of fun and play yeah. with their mates, you know. Yeah, that's right. So that's that's one big thing I suppose happened to rugby guys. Um, they got careers. That I don't know. I don't know very many professional rugby players at all. So most of the guys have got to work to yeah. do the nine to five grind exactly, or mate. seven to three or whatever kicks up in their lot of life, and that they can't dedicate a whole lot of time to rugby, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. It's um, rugby's different to league. In you know, you look at um, <coughs> pardon me, you look at. Uh, the shoot shield you've got your, your different grades and then you've got your subbies you've got your different grades and you know in, in the different clubs and whereas league you know you, you, if you if you're a certain age you play a grade certain age you play b grade and that's about it you know whereas yeah. a, and that's the beauty of rugby is you can go out and have a run around with your mates and be sort of semi-serious or not serious at all or be serious and 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 this all body types get to play it you know it's that's what i love about i love about the sport you know it's just um it's just all inclusive, I suppose. Yeah. You know. So, what was it like uh, working with? So, you manager this season as well, working with Salosi. Yeah. What, what was it like compared to working with like him uh, or Joel? So, when he was there, mate. Um, yeah, d- different, completely different. Um, Salosi, mate, super calm, super calm. Even when uh, you know things weren't going too, wouldn't say too good. Things weren't going our way. Um, just really calm and I, I loved I really loved the way he spoke with the players not at the players you know he, he didn't he didn't put he was very calm and direct he, he said okay this is the issue this is how we're going to fix it and there was no there was no ambiguity there was no players going oh shit what do we do here what's happening here they knew what their role was you know yeah. and it was each person had their role very very similar to to, to um, what's his name from, from uh, Melbourne Storm for yeah. you know Craig Bellamy, yeah, yeah, Craig Bellamy. Every person knows their role, and you know they go and do it. You know, and um, mate, he done wonders. He done wonders this year with the club. He, he, and Liam, Liam as well. You know, and and Guernsey, the second grade coach. Say, you know, uh, mate, Liam was amazing with his line. So I've never seen a guy study so much. He had this program, and and he'd sit there for hours just just moving moving this little cross a fraction just to get the our guys in the right position for you know yeah. against the other lineouts. It was just. Very, very professional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that would be the big uptake, I suppose. Looking forward. So, and you can't criticise Joel in particular. No. Just didn't play professional rugby. These, yeah. both of these guys did. They played Super Rugby, and uh, both of them have played like Salosi played like professional yeah. rugby his whole yeah. career. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, three World Cups. So, yes. Liam's won Shoot Shield, the Sydney yeah. Union, stuff like that yeah. as well. Yeah. Been yeah. with Parramatta, played Brumbies and all that sort of stuff too. So. It, it, talking like a difference between chalk and cheese, there's a fair level of difference, and um, yep. it's uh, that's going to help. So when nurture and develop players, they really feel if you set a level like let's say a number number sixty, and yeah, all right, if they'll be able to achieve up to that level. We might get some guys will exceed that, but if you raise it to eighty, and that's the level you're at because you've got more experienced coaches you get the same things so you'll get a bit more output because they've got a little bit more that they can deliver you, you feel like that's a pretty fair reflection of how it was this season yeah I, I do I, I do I also um, like taking nothing away from Joel Joel you know we didn't have the budget no. um, back then and you know it was um, as you say really really part time stuff and, and our guys are still part time but but there was some more I suppose a bit more budget we can we can look at a few extra things and, and bring in that more professionalism um, I think I think the other thing w- with Solosi too was his honesty with the players like I remember before Christmas uh, in pre-season training he dragged everybody in like we had we had whatever 35 blokes in the top squad or whatever then you had guys to, that, were, that were down for grade you know in the Colts but he grabbed everybody in and he said alright he said um, I remember I remember it like it was yesterday if we're going to if we're going to do anything in this comp we can't we, we can't do it by training Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've got to train Saturdays as well. He said, and, and if, even if you're in the top squad, if you don't have a valid reason for not turning up to training, well, I'm not going to take you. You're, you, you're going to be dropped. And he was just honest. And the guys sort of looked at each other and, and they walked, they all sort of went, yeah, you know, like you could see on their faces that, well, I'm in with a chance here to make first grade. It was just that, that okay, yeah. we've, this is going to be great. I've got my opportunity. And so, so there was absolute competition for first grade positions but it wasn't nasty or, or, or negative competition it was real positive competition mm-hmm. if a guy made a position in front of another guy they'd be patting the guy in the back well done you know and they'd be really supporting them um, so it was just that set the platform 
thought I think was a pretty successful year for us. I mean, yeah. like 38 points. We probably would have made the six any, year, any other year, you know. Seven wins, one draw. Yes, yeah, right. well, very close. It went very close, and and what winning like winning two bonus points or something out of the making the finals there. So yeah. generally, you would be happy with that season. So it's pretty heartbreaking when you have a good season and can't quite make it. <laughs> mate, mate, it is, yeah. Especially when the year before we didn't win a game, you know, and yeah. we were probably lucky in the end that that COVID hit in the COVID year. Um, otherwise, I don't know if we would have been able to feel aside. You know, we had so many injuries and just things that just weren't happening for us. You know. Yeah. So that'd probably be the big uh, take. I'd be taking out a takeaway from the whole thing. Uh, after our was the last couple of seasons, 2020, I felt heading 2021, you was looking all right, and COVID hit. You lost the game to Paris so as their first win in like seven years. It was uh, just another loss for you guys, which was hard. And COVID split the season, and just the numbers look like they're starting to dwindle again. So it has been a big turnaround and a big step forward. So are you glad you're part of it still? And oh. You, you feel like you're part of the whole brotherhood of the whole thing in with uh, Solosi and Liam and the team? Oh, absolutely, mate. I'm, you know, as you say, with COVID, it was... And again, I, and I feel for Joel, because we didn't have a home game, a home ground. We were playing out of Lincoln, which was not what you call the best. You know, it's in the middle of nowhere, and, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a dog's fight. Old. Yeah, old, yeah. And, uh, yes, you know, so all those sort of things, it really didn't help. It didn't help the, the club. We've got our beautiful new stadium, mate. We've got really good coaching staff. We've got a good board, a good GM. You know, don't get me wrong. Craig was fantastic. Joel was great and all that type of stuff. We just, we've got a, a few more resources this year. Um, it's just a different attitude. I think there was just, you know, things that we needed. I mean, you look at what Brian and Jenny um, Blacklock did for the club for the 10 years and, you know, they put their blood, sweat and tears into it to keep the, the club going, you know. And um, if it, I think it wasn't for people like them... The, the club would have folded a long time back, you know. And and this year we we did well. We, we you know on the back of a, a a bit of support, and hopefully we get that support next year. And yeah, mate, look, we've got um we've got some good structures in place. We've we've got a few good managers coming coming on board, um, looking to work with the juniors, which I think is just a fantastic thing. Yeah. Um, mate, the stalwarts trying to get the old boys back. Got the old club song going, you know, the old para matter instead of two blues. So. Oh, I think you know we're ticking. Eighty lines, eighty lines <laughs> yeah. long. I think we're ticking a lot of boxes <laughs> in regard to that. Um, yeah, and look, you know, fingers crossed. I, I remember a few years back, I, I, I looked at the side, I thought, "Geez, we're going to go good this year," and I think we come second last. And yeah. in, in 20, 2020, I said, "We've got a great side. We're going to go great." I don't think we want to go. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying anything, mate. This year, all I'm going to say is, yeah. I like what we've got in place. Yeah. We start pre-season on the first of November. And, um, mate, in a couple of months, we'll sit down and have another chat, yeah. and uh, we'll see where we go. That's right. So, uh, one other thing just before we scoot out of you. Yeah. I noticed you got outstanding secretary skills, doing a good job, taking all the uh, bits and pieces. People throwing all sorts of things at you today. So, mate, mate, I'm lucky. I'm lucky I wore my skirt. I didn't wear my four-inch high heels because they hurt my calves. I only wore the two-inch high heels today. But other than that, mate, yeah, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, mate, my previous jobs and what I do now, I sort of um, do an awful lot of typing and organising and all that type of crap, mate. So, uh, so, so how much do you fish through? Because everyone was, uh, I reckon you got six million ideas today. So and it would have taken you another three weeks to write them all down, especially coming from the big fella over there. So mate, he wasn't short of ideas. Mate, he wasn't short of ideas. <laughs> Never short of ideas. Is he? Is he? <laughs> I, uh, no, I got them all down. Got them all down. Yeah, he documented them all. So that's pretty good. I, I think all he's waiting to do is get in and have a look at this memorabilia, mate. So yeah, yeah that's all he's been saying all day. That's why he's been throwing the ideas up. So yeah. he doesn't realise the more ideas, the more I have to type, the longer it takes. <laughs> that's right, hundred percent. Anyway, thanks for your time, Cole. You appreciate it, and I'll chat to you again. Again, uh, early in the year. My pleasure, you're doing a great job. Absolutely. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. It's uh, a lot of fun there having chat, Peter Cole. That uh, is a good chat. And uh, yeah, we'll get going and do some more a bit later on.